cool. Right. Hello, welcome back to Unit 3, Part 2 of English 1 with me, Professor Neil, and Yonghee, my TA. TA Yonghee's back. Okay, hello, Yonghee. We brought back your cat, your kitty, too. My kitty's back. <laughs> All right, so in Part 1, we looked at the starter, things in the home. So it's just coffee table, sofa, television. And we looked at the various rooms in the house, the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, and the bedroom. And then we discussed prepositions in the dialogue with Greg and Kelly. Oh, my kitty looks sad. Yes. Starting again. And then we moved on to, we're going to move on to a little bit of recount of prepositions again. All right, in the speaking section, speaking one, in her handbag. So here the questions change a little bit. Here the questions have what's in them. What's in Linda's handbag? There is. There are. What's in Julia's handbag? There is. There are. Ah, now we can use the thing. Yes, we are talking about things. Right? Things or objects. In other words, for things is objects. Uh, things are items. Things are uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. And things are objects. Lots of different words just for things. So in Linda's handbag... So we'll look at the grammar section that deals with these questions. Alright, so to answer what questions, we often use words like this, there is, or there are. Alright, plus the object and the place where they are. So a question like, if you know where the ball is, you say the ball is in the box. But we want to use the phrase there is or there are. So we could also say there is a ball in the box. There is a ball in the box. Which is dealing with showing what something is. What is in something. What is in something. So for example, if we have there is a mirror in the bathroom. And if you ask the question where is the mirror? Yonghee, where is the mirror? Uh, previous part one, you would answer like, uh, it is uh, in the bathroom, but here we learned there is mm -hmm. or there are. So here there is a mirror in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. But it's still in the bathroom, in the bathroom. And so we're looking at these items and they're talking about where what's in their handbag so you got linda's handbag and julia's handbag and as we say we have the uh, the things like pens a wallet lip balm a mirror and tissues are in linda's bag and julia's bag we have a comb sunglasses hairpins earphones and cell phone and here it talks about handbag these are handbags bags that people use to carry their things in with their hand all right. And so the grammar here is using the word question, what? So what is in the bathroom? What is in the handbag? And they'll say, a mirror is in the bathroom. There is a mirror in the bathroom. So here the question has changed to use what. And with what, you can use there is. Ah, Professor Neil, I got uh, something interesting so when you say what uh, is a mirror right mm -hmm. so what is in the bathroom mm -hmm. so then you want to also emphasize mirror too so that's why you want a bit of um, time to you know start up which is a say location of there is yes and then you can say raise your voice a mirror. Mm -hmm. so there is a mirror, which is the uh, answer to what, mm -hmm. in the bathroom. Yes, and last unit we covered to emphasize your voice on important parts of the sentence. Mm. So mirror answers the question what. Mirror is not in the question, so you would emphasize it. There is a mirror in the bathroom. Mm. 
And it's very useful. Yes. The other example they have here is there are pictures on the wall. So the question would be, what is on the wall? Mm. But pictures are plural, yes. Professor. So you have to answer with are, not is. So okay. there are pictures on the wall. Very good, yes. Because they are plural, they have the S, meaning here we have three pictures. Three pictures on the wall, so you use are. Even though there's is in the question. Because the questioner doesn't know. No. The person asking the question does not know. The person answering the question do, should know. Know the number of things, whether it's uh, one singular or many plural. Yes. So let's practice. All right, I will ask Yong Hee about Linda's bag, and then Yong Hee will ask me about Julia's bag. Are you ready, Yong Hee? Yes, yes, I'm ready to answer to your question. Okay, let's. I'll move the cursor near the first one. What's in Linda's handbag? Mm, there is two pens in Linda's handbag. No, Yong Hee. As you ah, said. Ah, ah, mistake, mistake. Ah, oh, difficult. There are two pens in Linda's handbag. Very good, yes. Because there are two pens, you need R. What is in Linda's bag? Mm, there is a wallet in Linda's handbag. Yes, because there is one wallet. And what is there in Linda's handbag? There is a lip balm in Linda's handbag. Yes, there's just one lip balm. And what, what's in Linda's handbag? Uh, there are tissues in her handbag, but that's weird. Who carries that strange tissue box? Well, maybe she's taken some tissues out of the box and is only carrying some of the tissues, not all of the tissues. Okay, interesting. And the last one, what's in Linda's handbag? There is a mirror in Linda's handbag. Very good, yes, in her Linda's handbag. So in Linda's handbag, there are pens, there is a wallet, there is a lip balm, there are tissues, and there is a mirror in Linda's handbag. How about Julia's handbag? So, Yonghi, you ask me the questions, I will answer. What's in Julia's handbag? There is a comb. There are sunglasses. There are hairpins. There are earphones. And there is a cell phone. Ooh, very cool stuff. So, another option, you could say, there is a comb, sunglasses, earphones, hairpins, and a cell phone. Mm, that's good. A comb, sunglasses, earphones, hairpins, and a cell phone. Yes, and you could do the same with Linda's handbag. There, is, there are two pens, a wallet, a lip balm, a mirror, and tissues. Yes, so notice, because we start with a comb, you say there is a comb, sunglasses, earphones, hairpins, and a cell phone. But as Yong Hee did, because they're pens, you can say there are pens, a wallet, a lip balm, a mirror, and tissues. So the is and are are important for whether it's plural or singular. But you can make longer sentences just by only saying there is or there are one time. And it's something to practice when you're talking about what's in someone's handbag. Okay. We've done that. So now we're going to practice with talking, speaking to. We're going to move on to around the house. Speaking to around the house. Professor, I need to turn the page. Okay, if you turn the page. Okay, I'm ready, ready. Around so us, take turns asking about a furnished apartment. What's furnished? Okay, so furnished, good question, Yonghee. 
has furniture like a sofa table and dinner table and dinner chairs and glasses furniture are the things in your house the furniture the apartment is a furnished apartment furnished yes furnished. Unf unfurnished has no furniture so the table shows items the table shows the items in the each room and then you're going to ask yes, no questions. Yes, no questions. Is there a refrigerator in the kitchen? And you've got an option, yes, there is. Or you might have a no answer. Are there any windows in the bathroom? No, there aren't. So these are yes, no questions. And you have the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, and the bedroom. Ooh, interesting. So just going back to the prepositions, they're in the preposition grammar section, there was the question section. So the questions here deal with yes, no questions. All right, so for example, is there a ball in the box? Yes, there is a ball in the box. All right, so you, with the yes answer, here they have short yes there is, but as Yonghee did, you can say everything. Yes, there is a ball in the box. But a ball in the box was in the question, mm. so you don't have to repeat it. You could just say, yes, there is. I prefer short. Questions. Yes, well, the shortest one is just yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Is there a ball in the box? No, there is not a ball in the box. No, there isn't contraction. A ball in the box. Yes, so as you know, he said contraction is not becomes isn't. Isn't. No, there isn't a ball in the box. And the shorter answer? No, there isn't. Or say no. Yes. Okay. So, no, there isn't. As you can see, the box is empty. The box is empty. Somebody stole the ball. Terrible. All right, well, let's just practice with some of these. So I will ask Yonghee the question. We're, we're not going to do all of them, but we'll just do some of them. I'll ask Yonghee the question, and Yonghee will give me a yes or no, the shorter answer. So we'll start with living room. Are there, and notice you have to see, because lamps has an S, is plural, you have to use any. If you're using are, you have to use the word any. Oof. Yeah, lots oh. to remember, lots to remember. Oh, my head. Yes. Okay, I'll try. But we're almost done. Mm. Are there any lamps in the living room? Mm, no, there aren't. Yes. No, there aren't any lamps in the living room. No, there aren't. Yongi, are there any forks in the kitchen? Yes, there are. Good. Uh, is there a shower in the bathroom? Yes, there is. Are there any curtains in the bedroom? Yes, there are. Very good. All right. All right. So, yeah, as you can see, this is a sort of yes, no option. Let's just try with a, an example kitchen. This is an example of a kitchen. So, Whose kitchen is this? Uh, my kitchen. This is where I live. Oh, yes. Professor Neil, you've got very interesting kitchen. I'm very proud of my kitchen. It's very colourful. And you have a washing machine in the kitchen. Nothing unusual about that. No. Not in England, anyway. Mm. Alright, so yes, there's a few things. There's lots of things in the kitchen. So I'm just going to ask Yonghee, or Yonghee's going to ask me a question. Are there any forks in the kitchen? No, there aren't. There aren't any forks. You can't see any forks. All right, so yes, you cannot see any forks, so there are no forks in the kitchen. 
So, Yongi, do you want to ask any other question? Mm. Are there any people in the kitchen? No, there are no people in the kitchen. <laughs> Didn't expect that one. Okay, but you can try asking yourself questions at home and answering the questions. Is there or are there any things in the kitchen? All right. So, for example, you could ask yourself, Is there a dishwasher in the kitchen? No, it isn't. No, there isn't. Uh, no, there isn't. Yes. Is there a coffee maker in the kitchen? Yes, there is. Very good, Yongi. So, yeah, the important point here is we're using there is and there aren't. All right, to talk about things in the kitchen. As it says at the top, practice. So, when you get some time, practice this. All right, for now, we are going to move on briefly. To classroom activity. Classroom activity is looking at books in the bookcase. Mm, I love books. So you're searching for things. So here we have the word things in an office. We've already learned that items and objects and stuff all have the same meaning of things. And we have the question. Right, which has an answer with a preposition because it's a where question. Preposition, location of the things. Mm -hmm. Where is the computer? It is on the desk. Ooh, a lot of work. Ooh, look at that. All right, so uh, we're gonna have some help. Write down, write down, write yes. down. Write things down. Take some notes. Okay. So I, we have the. Items, we have the things, and then what they're supposed to be in preposition to. Mm. So, Yongi, I'm going to ask you the question. Are you ready to answer? I'll try. Okay, let's try two of them. All right. Let's give you some examples. So, if you zoom in, we've got over here, we've got the files, mm. we've got the notepad, we've got the drawer in which there are files, we've got the pens, pen holder. Over here, we have the plant. Here's the computer, desk, papers are down here, the phone, and the picture. Mm. Challenging. So, where are the files? Uh, they are in the drawer. Yes. Ooh. They are in the drawer. Very good, yes. I noticed here we're just using the more direct form of the language. So, the files are in the drawer. The files are in the drawer. Let's try a second one, number two. Where is the picture? Mm, it's uh, behind the phone. Very Ooh. good. It's Ooh. or it is behind the phone. So a different preposition. Can I also say it's next to, to the computer? Yes. Mm. So there's always more than one option. You could say it is behind the phone, next to the computer, on the desk, mm. in front of the bookcase. Ooh, professor. Yes, Ooh, good example, good. good example. So let's try. So, Yonghee, where is the trash can? Uh, trash can is under the desk. Yes, the trash can is under the desk. Trash can is under the desk. Professor Neil, can I ask you a question and you answer? Okay, let's go that way. You Number four, you ask me the question. Uh, where are the pens? Where are the pens? Oh, over here. The pens are in the pen holder. Mm. Uh, where is the bookcase? Over here, you can see many books. The bookcase is behind the desk. Ooh. Uh, where is a notepad? 
Yangi's favorite. Yangi Kitty's favorite. Yes. The notepad is on the drawer. Professor Ni, you are too good. So we switch roles. Okay, I asked questions. Where are the papers? Mm, the papers are in the trash can. In the trash can, yes. Where is the plant? Plant is on the desk or uh, Behind pen holder. Mm -hmm. Behind the pen holder. Yes. Next to the computer. Mm, next to the computer too. Mm -hmm. And the last one. Where are the books? Books are uh, on the bookshelf, on the bookcase. Yes. So the books are in the bookcase mm, or, on, the... or on the bookcase. Both okay. Or... The books are on the bookshelf, in the bookcase. In the bookcase. In the bookcase, yes. It's a bit of a difficult one, that. Prepositions aren't easy. It is something you need to practice and build up your mental lexicon over time. So hopefully it will give you some more opportunity to work at it. Next page, next page. All right, next page. Classroom activity two. So choose four items from the word box. Here is the word box. Cups, microwave, frying pan, plant, forks, pots, coffee maker, and plates. And draw them in your kitchen. But I'm going to do it for you because I'm nice. So here I have chosen four items. I've chosen four items. And this is my kitchen. And I've put them into my kitchen. <laughs> oh, such graphics. Because this is... Homework! Yay! Oh, yes! You tricked us! Yes, so much excitement. I thought to you said you are nice. You are doing for us. That one's going to appear in homework. <sighs> ah, difficult. But I'm going to be nice. We're going to move on from that section. And listening. Yeah, we might as well do the listening. Alright, so listen to the descriptions of the house. Put a check of an O for correct description, X for the incorrect descriptions. So I'm going to read you the dialogue, and then you have to say where they are. All right, so I'll read one, three, and five, and Yonghee will read two, four, and six. All right, so that hopefully you're ready. Let's just click down. There we go. There are three chairs in the kitchen. There are three chair ch chairs in the kitchen. Is this correct or incorrect? So you only number two. Number two. There is a mirror above the dresser. There is a mirror above the dresser. Dresser, dresser. So is that correct? Is it correct or incorrect? Number three. There are magazines on the coffee table. There are magazines on the coffee table. Is this correct or incorrect? There are magazines on the coffee table. And number four. Number four, there is a refrigerator next to the stove. There is refrigerator next to the stove. So is it correct or incorrect? And number five, there is a shower in the bathroom. There is a shower in the bathroom. Is this correct or incorrect for number five? And the last one, number six. Number six. There is an armchair in the living room. There is an armchair in the living room. So number six, is it correct or incorrect? You mark those. So that's the end of the listening. 
now we're going to move on to the last thing, which is the reading and writing. Reading and writing. So as it says, read about Doug's dream home. Then think about your own dream home and its features. Write a description. Oh, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. All right, so above... So here we have Doug's dream home. And he says, My dream home is a townhouse. There are six rooms in the house. There are two bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, and two bathrooms. There is a king-size bed in one bedroom. There are big windows in the living room. Also, there is a grand piano in the living room. There are hot tubs in the bathrooms. Yongi, does this sound like a dream house? Yes. I want to live there. Okay. Sounds good. So, the first one, picture one. Uh, is this a townhouse? That's an apartment block. There, they are apartments. But, very nice. Many people want to live in those. And the second picture, is this a townhouse? I uh, don't know. It looks like, I guess. Or mansion? Oh, mansion. Yes, could be a mansion or a country Co house. Ah, country house. But mansion is good too. Mm. And then, this one's a bit more difficult. This one look like house. Ah, in the suburbs. Suburbs. Did I get my rice? And so what is the last one, Yonghee? Ah, townhouse means houses in the city. Yes, or in the centre of the town. Ah, townhouse. Very expensive, but good, good connections. Close to shops, close to pubs, close to amenities. Oh. Your dream home. So you know what's coming, Yonghee? This is... Another homework. Yeah, because there are two homeworks. So it's going to appear again. And you might want to do the grammar review. Right, to practice. We said practice is important. You might want to correct the mistakes here. And you might want to write the correct preposition under each picture to practice. Practice makes perfect. Strive to be perfect. And the last thing, look at the picture. And that's it. That's the end of part two. That's the end of unit three. All right. We hope you enjoyed your time with English one. And we hope to see you next time. Bye from Kitty, who looks like she's sleeping. And bye from everyone else. Bye-bye.